This is the Forest Haven Asylum, where patients were abused and neglected, and the death count is in the hundreds. It's been abandoned for over 30 years, but there's still many remnants of its past, including a mass grave somewhere on the property. Less than 500 feet away from me is an active prison, and about 25 feet from me is the Maryland Police Department in Pound Lot. I've been here three times before, but I never really had the guts to be here by myself or to stay the night, which is the goal of this video. I'm trying to stay the night, so. <laughs> before coming here, I did a lot more research about what this place was actually like. I just thought it was an abandoned hospital or whatever, and nothing really bad happened. But it turns out, when it opened, it was a really awesome place where people with disabilities could come and they could have a, a group community that supported them and they got the treatment that they needed. As funding got cut in the 60s, the quality of life really deteriorated. They couldn't afford the staff that they needed, and so there was a lot of really unqualified people working here. And that's when cases of abuse and neglect started. Patients were physically and, and sexually abused here. That first started in the 60s. And over time, things just got worse. There was a lot of uh, class action lawsuits against Force Haven and the administration, but it took decades before it finally shut down in 1991. No one really knows exactly how many people died here. Either they weren't keeping records or the records were lost. From what I could tell, it was somewhere over 300. There's some really awful stories. Here I start to go into detail about a story that's probably too graphic for YouTube. If you wanna know more, I've put a link in the description, but be warned that they're pretty heinous. At one point they had over a thousand patients. There's more than 30 structures on the 250-acre campus, including a huge administration building, a children's hospital, a chapel, obviously a whole lot more. Right now, I'm looking for the chapel. Here it is. It's really eerie to think that people who came to this chapel were the same ones running an organization that beat children, molested children, and just did all sorts of really just bad, bad things. But they came to church. They came. Good, good churchgoers, though. The prison is that way. So I'm gonna go this way. This is the third skeleton I've seen. I think it's a fox. It's weird to think that here they're basically keeping children as, as prisoners, and that is exactly what they're doing in the next building over. I hope nothing that messed up is going on over there, but you never know, unfortunately. The building I'm in now is the food services building. 30 years ago, they were serving food right here. I think that this is about as close to the prison as I can get. This building here is the Pine Cottage. This is where patients would stay. These are the shoes that they would wear. Here's an adult crib. When people would go into the asylum, they would find their relatives chained to these bed frames and their mattresses would be covered in piss and they would have burns from the urine. This is the administration building. It's like four stories tall. It's got a basement and it's just a big, big building. I've gotta get ready for the sun to come down. I gotta figure out where I'm gonna be sleeping. I cannot believe I'm doing this. This is ridiculous. My mom really didn't want me to do this. I spend the night at an insane asylum and piss off my mom, and you guys subscribe. Seems like a fair trade to me, I think. So here we've got like a big meeting room, and I think this is probably where I will set up and stay the night. Got my stuff right here. There's a wasp nest in here, so I'm not gonna be staying in this room. I think I'm gonna be setting up in this room. It's pretty nice, not gonna lie. It's corner office vibes. The only problem is that the impound lot is right across the street and like this bed is and uh, the floor came in and everything. Other than that stuff, it's great. I think I'll be able to use this piece of plywood to put my sleeping pad on. Look how comfortable that looks. My phone is almost dead. I had charged two portable chargers, but um, I forgot to pack them. So my phone's gonna be dead and I'm not gonna be able to use some of the lights that I brought. It's just gonna be my GoPro and one flashlight to last me the rest of the night. Oops. I've just been pacing around this building while I've been waiting for the sun to go down so that I can start exploring more of the place. Once it gets dark, I wanna explore the morgue and I want to explore the sort of like the children's part of the asylum, which is like another separate big building. Okay, 
it is now dark. Now I'm gonna be looking for the morgue. Nothing like spending your nights walking around an abandoned asylum, looking for where they used to keep the dead bodies, with your phone dead. A really common problem that they would have here was they would put the feeding tubes in so that the food would go into the lungs instead of the stomach. I, like countless people died from that. The staff just weren't trained. There it is. This is the morgue. Out of the hundreds of people that died here, I think that's how a lot of them died. Um, they would just die here and then go through this morgue and then get buried outside somewhere. But for the most part, they were just sort of forgotten about. And it's it's really weird to think about like all of that shit that happened. You know, the, the stories that I was telling earlier, all that happened here, happened in this place that I'm spending the night. It's just really weird. I, I don't know. So next I want to go to the children's side of the hospital, but the problem is that I have to make it past the police impound block. It has a ton of lights over it and barbed wire. I want to find the piano. Sorry, I just wish I could be back on my sleeping pad, or better yet, uh, be home right now, because I literally don't know where I am. There's broken glass everywhere. This place is like a maze, and I literally don't know where I am. Where am I? This is the exit, this is the way home. I wish I could take it now, but I don't have all my stuff with me. And I'm trying to spend the night, so. I made it back to the building. Oh my god. I guess I'm gonna try to get to some sleep. When I started this challenge, it was really more to test my nerves, right? And I wanted to see sort of what I could take. But now it's sort of become more about the history of the hospital. I mean, it was open for almost a century. And for 30 years of that, there was just constant abuse and neglect towards the patients. I think it's important to remember that. It's hard to sleep when you're in an asylum. The door's wide open. This is the next morning, and I swear to God, something tugged on my leg a couple times. There were people, like, running around this building. Like, I heard people. And I got up, I grabbed my GoPro, and, and this flashlight. And then it just, and then nothing. I don't remember anything after that. I'd like to think that tugging I felt in my legs was just like me twitching, but I'm really not sure. It felt like someone else was there. I didn't feel scared or anything. It was just almost like a playful type of tugging. I don't know. Maybe that sounds weird, but. And it also felt like one time I felt someone sort of try to jolt me awake, like, like push on my like, shoulders. I remember getting up off my sleeping pad, grabbing my GoPro, grabbing the flashlight, and trying to talk to the people who were there, but I was just, I don't know. I don't know if there were people there, because for a while I was hearing voices. I don't know if the voices were coming from the impound lot or where. Well, I just spent the night at a haunted asylum. So the least you could do is subscribe. Thanks. <laughs>